Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Monday, March 25th, 2024. I hope we are doing well this morning. And I pray that the Lord will continue to be with you. And today is a beautiful day to enjoy this blessing renewed in your life. And may you seek him today. And as you seek him, I pray that you will find him. Our reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 18, reading verses 15 to 20. And it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take it with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever he shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever he shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. 20 and last, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. We give God thanks this morning for his word of wisdom and guidance. And I pray that as we consider the reading this morning, that we will seek to make the applicable lessons that we need to, to our own lives. So the reading this morning is guiding us as to how we must deal with conflict with each other. And it especially speaks about conflict within the church or among brethren. But this can go for any kind of conflict but the main focus is for the church brothers and sisters in the church now here jesus was teaching about resolving conflict with the community of believers and he advised and addressed the issue directly with the person involved in the disagreement and seeking reconciliation so if the matter remains unresolved he says that you should go to the person and you should speak to the person about the issue now if you go and speak to the person and the person refuse to hear or refuse to reconcile then you need to go back to the person another time but this time take two or more witnesses with you to help you resolve the situation and he goes on to to say that if there is no progress where that is concerned if the person refused to still hear and to reconcile then you need to take the next step which is to what let the church know so you need to inform your pastor or your elder or whoever it is so the church needs to be aware of the situation and I will explain further why the church needs to be aware of it. Now, he says that if the person refused to still hear the church, then that person should be considered as a heathen and a publican. So in other words, it's almost like they are exiled then from the community of believers because of their own doing now. So it's not that you are going to kick them out or anything like that, but their actions have push them out but i will explain it further now why is it important for believers not to have conflict and strive i'm not saying that there won't be disagreement between people there will be disagreement from time to time but as i always say disagreeing is not the issue is how we deal with those conflicts and those disagreements that is the issue most of the time because a lot of us, we drag things out in a very nasty way that becomes very ungodly and it doesn't represent God in any way, shape or form. And it gives a bad reputation 
to the church and it shows like God is a God of confusion and conflict. So you see why it is that Christians should not be keeping malice with each other. As soon as you are aware that you offend somebody or somebody offend you, you need to go to that person and seek to make reconciliation, right? So you need to take the first step. Now, the reason why it is important for the church to get involved if there is no progress between you and the person is that remember that we are all a part of one body of believers, the body of Christ. And whatever one person does is a reflection on the church on a whole, right? So if I am behaving badly when someone is speaking about the church, do you think that they are going to just single me out? They are going to say the church because I am a part of the church. So if I am behaving badly, they are not going to just target me. They are going to say that the church are them Adventists there or those Christians or whoever. Because that's how people reason most of the time. They are not very selective. They tend to generalize and so they lump everybody in. And so to avoid those kind of disgraceful scandals and to put the church reputation in a bad light, it is very important for the church to be aware that there is an issue between you and your sister or you and your brother so that the church can come together as one to seek to help resolve the matter. And here is where the Bible talk about what when two or three are gathered together touching anything concerning him or concerning heaven that he is there in the midst so when the church come together as one and try to work through this situation god is there to what to give direction and to answer that petition do you understand so this is why it is important for the church to know so it's not a case where you're going to tell the church your business that's not the the point of it but if you are not getting anywhere with the person and you are not getting anywhere with the witness remember this is something that will directly affect the church also on a whole because this is the body of christ is one church is not several churches right and so think about it when you cut your finger your whole body feel the pain of that cut now it's the same way if you have a brother or a sister that is behaving unbecoming as a christian then the whole church is gonna feel this thing you understand now so we must make sure that we conduct ourselves in a manner that christ can be pleased with us and something to note here, if you go to the person and you try to resolve the situation, if it is you that offend the person and you, you said that you are sorry and the person refuses to forgive you, that person cannot be identified as a Christian because a Christian is a follower of Christ. And if you are a follower of Christ, God is forgiving. And if you say that you are following Christ, then you must for be forgiven too. Because what? It's not about you. And so if you can't forgive your brother or your sister, no matter what they did to you, then you have a problem. You have a very serious problem because what? You will never go to heaven with that kind of attitude. And so you are only shutting yourself out of God's kingdom when we have these kind of attitudes so something for us to think about so it's very dangerous right and i've heard a lot of christians speak this way and i and i use that word very loosely you know a lot of folks who goes to church and who says that they are following christ they refuse to forgive each other i'm not gonna be naive about your your pain and your suffering because the truth is that sometimes these people hurt us in ways that words can't even fathom sometimes but we still have to forgive them 
Look at what they did to Jesus. Look at what they did to Jesus. And while he was on the cross, in pain from what these wicked people did to him, what did he say? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Come on now, brethren. We need to do better. If God himself can say that, and you are telling me that you find it so hard to forgive your brother and to forgive your sister, and have the audacity to compile the insult by saying that, you know, you are, you, you, you are human and all of these foolishness. Those, that's just an excuse. That's just an excuse. So you are saying that because you are human and because you are subjected to these kind of weaknesses from time to time mean that you must, you, you must fall prey to them. If that's the kind of attitude that we are going to have as Christian, then might as well we just don't bother with this church thing. Might as well we just forget our relationship with God because this kind of attitude will never get us anywhere. It will only lead us down a road of destruction. So we need to learn to forgive. And if we are having challenges, and if we are finding it difficult to forgive somebody, then we need to pray earnestly and ask the Lord to help us to forgive that person because, as I said, no unforgiving person will ever go to heaven. And so if our intention is to go to heaven, then you know what you got to do. You don't have a choice. Well, you have a choice, but the choice, the alternative to asking God to help you and to actually forgiving the person is that you're gonna lose out and go to hell so think about which choice is better so friends as we seek to walk in the pathway of righteousness and as we seek to do what is right in the sight of god as we seek to be an example to our children an example to those looking on an example to the new babes that are coming into the, ch the church may we Keep always in the forefront of our mind that our attitude plays a vital role in the influencing of others around us. You ever hear they say, be the sermon? Okay, so we need to be the sermon more than how we actually preach in the sermon, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Because when you, when you are the sermon, it will be much easier for you to preach the sermon. Okay? So may God give us wisdom and may God help us and may God continue to guide us as we seek to walk in his favor. In Jesus' name, amen.